Hey everyone, so in around four and a half billion years, our Milky Way galaxy is going to be colliding with the Andromeda galaxy. So here's the question. So our galaxy contains billions of stars. The Andromeda galaxy also contains billions of stars. So as they come together and collide, will any of those stars actually hit each other? Or here's another question. Imagine we were to shoot a rocket into space and it were just to keep going without changing direction. How long would it have to travel before it actually hit something? So first let's see what would happen when the Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy collide together. Okay, so here is our Milky Way. The Andromeda galaxy is actually moving towards our Milky Way at around 250,000 miles per hour. Now it sounds fast, but it won't get to our galaxy for another 4 billion years around. And this big galaxy here is the Andromeda galaxy. You can see how much bigger it is than the Milky Way. So this is the Milky Way and this is the Andromeda galaxy. So this is going to be playing at around 1 million years per second. Here we go. Three, two, one. You can see they're attracted to each other due to their gravities. Each of the galaxies are starting to pull each other's stars toward each other, and they're starting to merge. You can see as they come together, a lot of the stars are actually just thrown off into space. But also a new galactic center forms where a lot of the stars are orbiting around. But here's the question, did any of these stars actually collide together? Well the answer is probably not. So why did none of these stars actually run into each other? Well, the answer has to do with how empty these galaxies actually are. For example, our Milky Way on average has around only 0.004 stars per cubic light year. So imagine how far light can travel in one year and cube it. That cube of space only has around 0.004 stars in it. So that means if you were to take a thousand cubic light years, which is an insanely large volume, in that volume, you'd only find about four stars, and that's within a galaxy. So needless to say, most of the space of a galaxy is just empty. There's only tiny little spots of stars where the matter is condensed. So when two galaxies collide, nothing is actually colliding. It's just that the stars from one galaxy can feel the pull of the stars of another galaxy. So to give you an idea of what I mean, let's take another example here. Let's say we start out on Earth and we want to just shoot a rocket ship up into space. How likely is it that we would ever hit anything? So let's choose a direction in which we're most likely to hit something. That looks like a pretty bright star. In fact it is, that's the sun. So let's just head in that direction really fast and see if we hit anything. So I'm going now 4,000 kilometers per second. 5,000. Now I'm going around 0.85 the speed of light. So this gives you an idea how big space actually is. You can't even see the sun getting closer even though I'm traveling at 0.85 the speed of light. But luckily for us, I don't have to obey the speed limit of the universe in this simulation and I can even go faster than it. So I'm going at two times the speed of light now, three times, 13 times the speed of light. And here we go. Speed it up even more, 21 times the speed of light. And we missed the sun. <laughs> so without any course correction, 
I totally just missed the sun. Let's look back and see where it went. Oh, there it is. Put it back right in the middle of my screen. I hit it. So with some course correction, you can see I can land on the sun. But what about with no course correction? If I just look up into the night sky and randomly shoot in any direction, will I ever hit any of these stars? Well, let's try it. So let's say we want to head straight into the center of our Milky Way galaxy. What are the chances that we would actually hit anything? Well, let's go for it. So I'm going 3,000 kilometers per second now and not much headway. In order to do this, we're gonna have to go much faster, faster than even the speed of light. And luckily for us, the rules of physics don't apply in this software. We can go faster than the speed of light. So I'm now going at 67 times the speed of light, heading towards the center of our Milky Way. Let's see if we actually hit anything. So I'm going actually four light years per second now. So I'm not gonna adjust, I'm just gonna head straight into it. We can see we're passing stars, but we're not hitting any of them. Let's speed up even more. We're still not making much headway. So right now we're going a crazy speed, 5.3 light years per second. So that means how long it would normally take light to travel in one year. We're going that far in per second. Let's speed up even faster. Okay, we're getting towards the center of our Milky Way now. So you can see all these stars were flying past, but we're not hitting any of them. So we're traveling right through our galaxy, right through the center of it, but nothing's happening. We're not hitting anything. In fact, let's speed up even faster. So 3,000 light years per second now. It looks like we've completely gone through our Milky Way. These are just some straggling stars on the outer end. Let's turn around and look back at it. Yep, there it is. <laughs> so there's the Milky Way galaxy. We completely went through it and didn't hit anything. Let's try to hit the center there. You can see that in order to hit a star, I'm gonna have to slow way down so let's choose a star right now to try to hit. How about this one? So I have to continually adjust for it. I need to slow way down here. And by slow way down, we're still thousands of times faster than the speed of light. Oh, I passed it. Oh, we're gonna hit it. So continually adjusting, I can get closer to it. Oh, still missed it. Let's slow way down and keep adjusting. So this is some random star in the Milky Way. It looks like it has some planets around it. Let's land on it. Ooh, that looks like a cool one. Try to land on it. Hey, this is actually two different stars. So this is a binary star, two stars actually orbiting around each other. Pretty cool. Okay, so continually adjusting, I was able to hit this star. And look at the other star next to it. So now we leave our Milky Way. And let's see if we can even just hit another galaxy. So let's aim a different direction and see if we even ever run into a different galaxy. So 
So we're going 66,000 light years per second. Let's speed it up a little. 4 million light years per second. 21 million light years per second. So at this point, it's just gonna look like warp speed. 326 million light years per second. And not only are we not hitting any stars, in fact, we're not even hitting any other galaxies. In fact, if you took a billion light years cubed of space, there would only be around 0.4 galaxies in it. So that means even on a galactic scale, there's mostly just empty space. So no matter what you do, no matter what direction you're going, whether you're trying to collide galaxies together or just shoot something big out in space, no matter what you do, you're never going to actually hit anything. And this is quite an interesting point to think about. There's so much stuff in space, but that stuff is spread out over such an enormous area that most likely none of that stuff will ever contact each other. The only way that stuff does contact each other in space is because there's one force that ties everything together, and that's gravity. In fact, no matter how far apart stuff is in space, it will always feel the other thing's gravity. So that gravity is continually pulling everything together, wanting it to coalesce into one point. But there's another force in our universe that's continually expanding everything, pushing it apart. And right now our universe is expanding faster than it's being pulled together. In fact, after a while, our entire observable universe will be nothing but our very own galaxy that we live in. All of the other galaxies will have expanded so far out that it will be outside of the observable universe. So we're actually lucky at this point in time right now that we can actually see galaxies around us. If it was later in time, the universe would have expanded so much that the galaxies would be too far apart to even see. So there you go. If you ever get lost floating in space, just know that you're probably going to be floating indefinitely before you hit anything. And what gets even crazier is not only is our universe mostly empty space, but even if you zoom in on some of that coalesced matter that we call our solar system, if you zoom in really close to that and find something like this house and these atoms that I'm made of, if you keep zooming in and you were to do the same journey that I just did here with these stars, but instead of stars, you're trying to hit atoms. If you just kept zooming in, most likely you also wouldn't be able to hit a nucleus of an atom. That's because just like space, most of the area of any atom is empty space. So 99.9999999996% of a hydrogen atom is just empty space. The proton is just at the very center there. And most likely you can't hit it. So what's weird about this thought is including you, the house you live in, the earth that we're on, the galaxy that we're in, the sun that shines on the earth, Everything is just empty space. Yet somehow in this empty space, we are here and exist. So thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab, and we'll see you next time.